Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're testing out how well the flagship X399 boards work with the Threadripper 2990WX and we'll be focusing on VRM performance, uh, namely thermals. I conducted all this testing a few weeks ago now but never got around to releasing all the data and if I waited much longer it may never have happened given what we have coming up on the channel next week. So for this test, we have four X399 motherboards. We have the insane MSI Meg X399 creation. I also have the new Gigabyte X399 Aorus Extreme. That's a pretty cool looking motherboard that yeah, I'm yet to test out. And we also have the tried and true ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme. So keen to give that board another go and see how it stacks up to the newer boards. And then last, but Possibly not least is the ASRock X399 Professional Gaming. Uh, since the release of the 32 core, uh, or even just the second gen Threadripper parts in general, both ASUS and ASRock are yet to uh, introduce any new X399 motherboards. So they have added support, obviously, to their existing boards for the 32 core 2990WX, but I wanted to see how well it actually works on those boards. Before I explain the test method and then, of course, go over all the results, I thought we should probably cover each board in a little bit more detail, go over the VRM design and, of course, the cooling used. And we will start with the granddaddy of them all, the MSI Meg X399 creation. And I will be dropping the Meg from uh, the naming moving forward just because, well, let's be honest, it sounds pretty crap and it's just an extra thing to say. So we'll go with X399 creation. Anyway, for those unfamiliar with this beast, it packs a genuine 16 phase V-Core VRM using the IR35201 controller, which supports up to eight phases. Each phase is doubled using an IR3599 phase doubler, which connects to a pair of Infineon TDA21472 power stages for two separate phases, each filtered through a 60 amp choke. The Infineon power stages pack a 70 amp rating, but sadly there's no publicly available spec sheet for these parts. In any case, they are basically overkill, even for the 32 core 2990WX, and that's what we like to see. Feeding power to the board are a pair of dual 8-pin power connectors. As amazing as the VRM is, it's still going to need a decent cooler if you plan on overclocking the 2990WX. So MSI has gone with a massive pair of aluminium heat sinks, which are connected to one another via a nickel plated copper heat pipe. Sadly, these aren't finned heat sinks, which would have been ideal, but instead they are just slabs of aluminium. But even so, given their size and the quality of the VRM, I expect they will still work quite nicely. Of course, there's much more to the X399 creation, but I won't dive into anything else for this video. Again, the focus is solely on VRM thermal performance. I would just like to note though that MSI has included voltage offset support for this board, a much needed feature that wasn't present on the board when we first got it ahead of the release, but the latest BIOS version does include that feature, so that's great to see. New from Gigabyte, we have the X399 Aorus Extreme. And this is a very, very impressive looking board. And once we take it out of the box and have a good look at it, you will notice that the VRM is quite compact, certainly much more so than the MSI board that we just looked at. They have managed to squeeze it between the two banks of DIMM slots. What we have here is another IR35201 controller, but whereas MSI uses all eight phases with doublers, Gigabyte's using just five phases, though they are again doubling them using the IR3599 phase doubler. This time though, we find IR3578 power stages, which are only rated for 50 amps. This means the board provides a combined 500 amp capacity, and that is a country mile from the 1020 amps of the MSI board. There's still plenty of power input though, you get two 8-pin power connectors, but for a board specifically designed for the 32-core 2990WX, I have to say the X399 Aorus Extreme's VRM is somewhat underwhelming. In what I suspect is an effort to compensate for the lackluster VRM, Gigabyte has included real heat sinks which are actively cooled via a pair of 35mm fans, and this has caused a few mixed feelings for me. On one hand, it's great to see proper finned heat sinks. That's certainly great stuff. However, despite that, it's quite clear that this VRM is going to be put under the pump with the 2990WX as Gigabyte has felt the need to include active cooling with not just one, but rather two fans. Gigabyte also claims we're using higher grade thermal pads rated at five watts per Kelvin rather than the standard 1.8 watts per Kelvin used by most motherboards. 
The advantage of the compact VRM is that it's allowed Gigabyte to include four PCIe times 16 slots with spacing for dual slot cards. That said, if you plan on using a massive air cooler like the Wraith Ripper, the primary slot will be blocked. Anyway, the X399 Extreme does have a lot of nice features such as 10 gigabit ethernet, uh, dual Intel gigabit LAN, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, and much more. I'm just a little concerned that this Extreme board won't be that extreme for those wanting to overclock the 2990WX. Then, as I said earlier, we have the tried and true ASUS ROG X399 Zenith Extreme. Actually, X399 isn't in the name, it's just the Zenith Extreme, but anyway, doesn't really matter. This particular board can be upgraded. There's a new cooling kit for it. Uh, but for this particular test, I won't be modifying the board and using that cooling kit. But be aware if your case cooling isn't great, you can purchase a few of those additional horrid 40 millimeter fans to plaster over the VRM heatsink. Prior to the release of the MSI X399 creation, the Zenith Extreme was pretty much the cream of the crop, the granddaddy of the X399 motherboards. It uses an ASP1405 controller, which I'm pretty sure is just a rebadged IR35201, but for whatever reason, ASUS tends to be a little bit special like that. Anyway, what we have here is a true eight phase VRM without any kind of doubling scheme. Meanwhile, whereas Gigabyte used 50 amp IR3578 power stages, ASUS has gone with IR3555 power stages, which are 60 amp parts. And then we have some 60 amp microfine alloy chokes. ASUS uses a slab of aluminium to cool their eight phase V-Core VRM, but it connects via a heat pipe to an actual real heat sink, you know, fins and all. There's even a 40 millimeter top down fan though, honestly, it moves stuff all air and makes way more noise than it's worth, at least in my opinion anyway. I really think like Gigabyte, they just need to remove the stupid plastic shroud over the actual real heatsink and just let the case cooling do the work for you. It'll be very interesting to see how the ASUS and Gigabyte boards perform with the 2990WX, as one was created with the new 32 core processor in mind, while the other wasn't, and yet they aren't that different in terms of VRM capabilities. And finally, we have the Fatality X399 Professional Gaming, uh, ASRock's flagship X399 motherboard. Like ASUS, ASRock hasn't gone all out with the release of the second gen Threadripper CPUs. In fact, they haven't really gone out at all. Instead, they've just opted to stay the course with the three boards they already had. The VRM design is basically the same as what we found on the Zenith Extreme, but ASRock hasn't rebranded the controller. So here we have the IR35201 driving eight phases using IR355 power stages with 60 amp chokes. So another VRM that's designed to be more than sufficient for the Threadripper 1950X and therefore the 2950X, but I can't see us squeezing much extra out of a 2990WX on this board. Cooling wise, it's a pretty basic affair. We have an aluminium slug directly on the power stages, and then this heatsink is connected to a larger aluminium slab behind the IO panel. So no finned heat sinks here, just big fat heat reservoirs. So it'll be interesting to see how the professional gaming performs in our temperature tests. Speaking of which, we've pretty much covered everything we need to here, so let's move on to discuss the testing method. To apply load to the system, I'm not using a power bug type program like Prime95. I have nothing against using that kind of software, it certainly has its place. But for this test, I want to use a real world workload. So I went with a Blender workload that takes the 2990WX a little over 20 minutes to complete. So this test was run three times back to back for an hour long stress test. This means the load results are reported after an hour of running Blender. And then the idle is taken after a 10 minute cooldown period. There are three tests in total. First, we'll look at stock results, so out of the box 2990WX performance, then a 4 GHz overclock using just 1.25 volts, and then an unrealistic extreme stress test, again at 4 GHz, but this time using 1.4 volts. All three tests will be conducted twice, once on an open air testbed with no direct airflow over the VRM, though note the ASUS and Gigabyte boards do feature small fans so they aren't truly passive and therefore kind of cheat in this test. Then we have a second test configuration inside the Corsair 500D with three 120mm intake fans in the front, two 120mm intake fans in the top, and a single 120mm exhaust fan in the rear. So the top mounted fans are directing airflow directly over the board's VRM heatsinks. Then cooling the CPU was the Enemax Liquitec 280, which was mounted in the front of the case. 
To record the temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples. I've placed multiple sensors on the surface of multiple power stages to measure the temperature across the VRM, and I will be reporting the highest value. So this means I'll be measuring the temperature directly on top of the component uh, between it and the thermal pad and not an internal temperature, which is bound to be a little bit higher. Still with all boards tested under the exact same conditions, that'll give us a clear picture of how the VRMs compare on each board. Starting with the open testbed results, which sees no direct airflow over the VRM heat sinks, we have the 2990WX in its stock configuration. Again, remember the Gigabyte board packs two 35mm fans, while the ASUS board has a single 40mm fan, and then the MSI and ASRock boards are completely passive. Quite shockingly, despite featuring two real heat sinks and two 35mm fans, the Gigabyte board managed to produce the highest VRM temps in this test, and given how these boards compare on paper, I would have never predicted this. It's also very, very strange how the ASRock board, which doesn't feature any form of active cooling and also doesn't feature any finned heat sinks, managed to run seven degrees cooler under load. Meanwhile, the ASUS Zenith Extreme, which also includes a 40 millimeter fan, ran at 16 degrees cooler than Gigabyte's Aorus Extreme and was comparable to the beastly MSI creation, which I should note is 100% passively cooled. So as expected, the MSI creation provides the most impressive result, but it has to be said the ASUS board also does very well. Okay, so time to overclock, and at 4 GHz using just 1.25 volts, the ASRock Professional Gaming failed the stress test, crashing after a few minutes of heavy load. The Gigabyte Aorus Extreme shot up well over 100 degrees to hit a peak temperature of 117 degrees, and again, that's a pretty shocking result given the board does pack active cooling. Meanwhile, the ASUS and MSI boards saw peak temperatures increase by about 20 degrees, and although the creation ran 6 degrees hotter than the Zenith Extreme, remember it doesn't feature any kind of active cooling, whereas the ASUS board does, and it was quite loud in this test. Then finally, we have the Extreme Stress Test using 1.4 volts, and here the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme had seen enough. The board would randomly power off during the stress test and it wasn't temperature related. Almost every time the VRM didn't get a chance to hit even 80 degrees before the board would completely power off and require a power cycle before it would allow us to boot back up. Therefore, we are tripping the board due to a current overload rather than a thermal issue. It seems the Aorus Extreme simply can't handle the power requirements of this test. Then of course we have the ASRock Professional Gaming which also failed this test as it failed at 1.25 volts so it was never going to pass at 1.4 volts. The ASUS Zenith Extreme appeared to have no issues with this test and kept rather cool at 87 degrees. And then we see the MSI creation did run quite a bit hotter at 99 degrees but for a truly passive design that's a really incredible result. Now, with the boards installed inside the Corsair 500D, we have direct airflow over the VRM heat sinks, so this will no doubt help reduce the load temperatures. The improvement for the ASRock board was a 10 degree drop for the load result, which actually isn't too bad. That said, the Gigabyte board dropped by an incredible 26 degrees. So this tells us two things. Firstly, those 35 millimeter fans clearly aren't working very well, or we wouldn't have seen such an extreme drop when adding more cooling and the finned heat sinks work extremely well when fed cool air via case fans. The MSI board was more in line with what we saw from ASRock. Uh, with airflow, it's now 14 degrees cooler, while the ASUS board was 11 degrees cooler. So with the exception of the Gigabyte board, we saw a 10 to 15 degree reduction in temperature when adding some case cooling. The good news here for Gigabyte though being that with the Aorus Extreme installed inside the ATX case, the performance was much better and with a stock 2990WX, it is comparable to the other high-end MSI and ASUS boards. Okay, so time to overclock once again, and here we see that even with the increased airflow, the ASRock Professional Gaming still can't handle a four gigahertz overclock with the 2990WX. Here we see that the MSI creation is now peaking at 73 degrees, which is a 12 degree improvement compared to what we saw on our open test bench. And meanwhile, the ASUS board is now running seven degrees cooler. And this means installed in our ATX test system that the Zenith Extreme ran just one degree cooler than the MSI creation. Again, we see yet another massive improvement for the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme, this time a rather insane 36 degree drop in temperature is seen when compared to the open test bed result, which saw the board peak at 117 degrees. 
This result would be far less surprising if the board didn't feature two active fans, but again, I'll talk about this later in the video. Finally, we have the most extreme stress test, which sees the 2990WX running at 4 GHz using 1.4 volts. The Gigabyte board again failed, and once again, it isn't due to a thermal issue, but rather an overdraw safeguard shutting the board off. Previously on the open testbed, the MSI Creation hit 99 degrees, making it 12 degrees hotter than the Zenith Extreme. Again, the ASUS board features a small active fan, whereas the Creation doesn't. However, now with the aid of case cooling, both boards max out at the same 81 degrees, and that is a super impressive result given the test conditions. Before wrapping up the temperature testing, I decided to get out the IR gun and measure the temperature of the V-Core VRM heatsink. Here we're looking at the highest surface temperature taken from the top of the heatsink in the ATX case using the stock 2990WX configuration. This is interesting because here we see the Gigabyte board's heatsink was actually the coolest as the proper finned heatsink design dissipates the heat much more efficiently. Then we see even with the help of case cooling, the aluminium bricks on the MSI Creation retain the most heat, while the bricks on the ASRock board were slightly better. This is probably down to the fact that there is far more surface area on the heat sinks featured on the ASRock board, and it's also fully exposed, whereas MSI shroud their second larger heat sink in plastic. Still, it's interesting that despite a low heat sink temperature, the Gigabyte board's VRM still run very hot though this is likely down to the components used being of a lesser quality, and we know they are only using 50 amp power stages. Here's a quick look at how the power stage and heatsink temperatures compare under the same conditions. Here we can clearly see that although the VRM components on the Gigabyte board are exceeding that of the MSI Creation, the top of the heatsink is significantly cooler. Meanwhile, the MSI Creation sees only a single degree difference between the power stage and heatsink temperature. So just imagine how well this board will perform with real heat sinks. Of course, I'm not saying that it needs them, but damn, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Okay, so I went into this expecting the MSI X399 creation to be the ultimate X399 motherboard. And in terms of power delivery, it certainly is. Uh, that said, when it comes to VRM thermal performance, the ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme certainly rivals that board. But remember, it does have active cooling, whereas the MSI board is completely passive. For extreme overclocking, well beyond what I've uh, demonstrated in this video, it's likely that the MSI board will ultimately win out. But for your more typical overclocks using 1.25 to 1.3 volts, there really appears to be very little difference between the ASUS ASUS and MSI uh, motherboards. They both ran at just over 70 degrees when installed in the Corsair 500D test system. The Gigabyte X399 Aorus Extreme, that board, it was a bit of a mixed bag, I have to be honest. It appears to be right on the edge with 1.25 volts for our overclock, and pushing beyond 1.3 volts did cause the board to power trip. So we were in the middle of a test. Uh, as I said earlier, it didn't appear to be thermal related. It would just completely shut off, and we couldn't power the system on until we completely power cycled it, and then it would boot back up. Of course, if we didn't lower the voltage, it would just do it again quite quickly. Uh, the two 35 millimeter fans, they basically, or they appear to be basically useless. Uh, while I haven't put that to the test by removing them and then retesting the board, I can almost guarantee that if you were to remove the fans and then that stupid plastic shroud that covers the large finned heatsink, that would probably yield better results in our ATX uh, test case. Still, for those of you looking to overclock the 2990WX, VRM thermals appear to be the least of the Aorus Extremist worries, as it only hit 81 degrees in our 1.25 volt ATX case test. The real issue is power draw, and as I said, going much above 1.25 volts at 4 GHz caused massive problems for the Gigabyte board. Just to be clear, at 1.3 to 1.35 volts, the Gigabyte board would often successfully complete multiple blender runs, but rarely made it to 5 before shutting off. So this might not be an issue you see if you run a quick 30 minute stress test, for example. As for the ASRock X399 Professional Gaming, well, it had less headroom with the 2990WX and the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme. Basically, with the ASRock board, overclocking is pretty much off the table, and frankly, it's not a good pairing for the 2990WX. It will work perfectly fine with the 2950X, and you'll be able to get the most out of the new 16 core CPU but the 32 core model is just a bit too much. The 2990WX is an $1,800 US CPU, so 
I doubt those in the market for such a beast are looking to skimp on the motherboard. And this is why the MSI X399 creation makes so much sense. At $580 US, it is the most expensive X399 board, but really in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much more expensive given what you get. After all, it is only $60 to $80 US more than the ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme, which usually sells for around $520 US. It's only about $130 US more than the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme, and then about $200 more than the ASRock Professional Gaming. And to be fair, at just under $400 US, that board really is a good pairing for a 16 core model. In my opinion, this places the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme in a bit of an odd position. At $450 US, it means that if you spend $70 more, you can get the Zenith Extreme, and it's a safer bet if you're going big with the 32 core processor. And then you could just spend another $60 to $80 and get the MSI Creation. This choice becomes even more obvious if you're buying a motherboard and CPU combo. So that is to say you're buying an X399 motherboard with the 2990WX. Right now at Newegg, you can snag an MSI creation and 32 core CPU for about $2,280, or you can get the Zenith Extreme bundle for $50 less. So that's a 2% saving, and that being the case, I know which one I would get. And that is going to do it for this one, hope you guys enjoyed all the testing that went into getting all the temperature results for these boards. Uh, quite useful if you're going to buy the 32 core processor uh, and probably not as useful if you want the 2950X because honestly that CPU will work quite well on any of these motherboards. It really comes down to price and the feature set then, uh, the VRM will be more than capable. Anyway, hope you liked the content. If you did, hit the like button for us, please. Uh, subscribe for uh, more content just like this, hit the alarm if you actually, or the little bell, if you want to be notified, that usually sometimes maybe could work. And if you would like to support us more directly, maybe check out our Patreon, you get cool behind the scenes videos, access to our Discord chat, and our monthly live stream that we're actually doing two of those now a month. So yeah, all good stuff. Anyway, I am your host, and I will see you again next time.